Hello, I'm Camilla Ryan, a PhD student here at UEA and the Earlham Institute. And welcome back to Welcome Watch. Today we're going to be learning about some of the amazing invertebrates we can find on campus. And to tell us more, I'm joined by Dr Ian Barn. Hello Ian. Hello. So can you please tell us a, a bit about your role here at UEA? So I've been uh, at UEA for 15 years now. I'm a course director for the Ecology and Conservation degree programmes and uh, I'm a senior lecturer and I work on biodiversity, conservation and general wildlife natural history aspects. Fantastic. And you are the person to talk to really about invertebrates, aren't you? Because, I mean, tell us about them. How many do we have here? So we've done a lot of work on the UEA campus trying to find out the diversity of invertebrates that we have here. And um, we use a variety of techniques in a variety of the diverse habitats that, that we've got here. We've got 5,700 species identified from the campus. The vast majority of those are invertebrates. And of those, most of them are insects. So they're super diverse groups, but they're also indicative of habitats. And we use the biodiversity auditing that we've been doing to try and measure how healthy the campus is, how much it's changing over time. So in the 15 years I've been here, there's been quite a lot of changes that we've recorded um, from driven by climate change, driven by habitat use and management, such as this grassland. The management has changed from a flat lawn to being more rich grasslands. an example of how that might impact the insect life? So management um, has to be tailored and this, this land here is not su suitable for anything because it slopes, mm -hmm. it's particularly poor um, soils and so it, grasslands thrive mm -hmm. and when you plant grasslands or allow it to grow you get that diversity of habitats, you yeah. get the niches uh, for all the invertebrates and, and that just, it's just good to have yeah. more vegetation equals more invertebrates in a crude way. So I know that you very kindly got up at an unspeakable hour to be able to bring us a moth trap. So could you maybe show us the trap and talk us through some of the things that you found? Okay, so what, one of the challenges as an entomologist is actually getting to see your uh, things you're interested in. And so we use some clever techniques to trap them. One of them is using a bright light. So anyone that's opened a window on campus will have moths flying into, the, into their room. This is no different. We just have um, a spaceship-like um, device here with a big light at, right out the top and that light attracts uh, the, the moths that then fly into it and they rest on egg, bo egg storage boxes and they rest there during the day when it's the sun's on them they don't move they just stay still and rely on their camouflage and at night they'll fly away again so we can then go along and we can um, identify them and maybe find out a bit more about them. So what are some of the species that you found in this trap? So one of my favourites is the, the black rustic, a really gothic looking black moth. But when you look at it, it's got shades of purple and blue on it when it turns in the light. It's got some golden speckles as well. And this one's a um, habitat generalist, so it feeds on a wide range of herbaceous plants. So by monitoring the numbers of black rustics we catch each week and year on year, we can see the health of these herbaceous plants at UEA. Another one is the cetaceous Hebrew character which is an amazing name. They've got amazing names, these moths. And that's, again, that's an, a, a generalist moth, so we use those together. We've also got the lunar underwing, which feeds just on grasses, like the grassland here. Mm -hmm. So if we've got lots of them, we know our grasslands are healthy. So, but the best place to, to, to see the moths is come, come out at night with a torch, have a look, look around, you'll see moths flying around everywhere. We've got a really cool one, actually, by the beach, over by the lake, um, called the ghost moth. And in the spring, they come out and they do a lek. They dance in the moonlight. It's quite amazing to see. That's something to put on your tick list for UEA. Um, but by monitoring these generalists and the ratio of generalists to specialists, we can find out um, sort of how healthy the environment is really. I mean, that is absolutely fascinating. I had no idea about those ghost moths and it's definitely now on my tick list. Hmm. So thank you so much for joining no us today, Ian. Thank you. I'm joined now by Susie Gill, who's an entomologist over at the John Innes Centre. Now, the John Innes Centre is, is just across the road from UEA, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about insects generally. Hello, Susie. Hi, Anne. 
So Susie, what is your role? Uh, I am what's known as a research entomologist, um, so I basically conduct science using insects. Much of the work that happens over at John Innes is crop science and agricultural related work, and so my job is to look at insects on crop plants and see how they, uh, they interact with those crop plants so that we can grow better plants for ourselves to eat. So what kind of things might, might that be? Would you modify their behaviour or yeah. how would you...? Uh, try to modify their behaviour, okay. which starts with observing their behaviour. So uh, one obvious thing that we look for is feeding behaviour um, and seeing which insects um, prefer which type of plants. And then we can manipulate that um, and, and try and encourage the insects to eat plants that they like more that we don't like kind of thing yeah. so if we if we guide them towards the things that we don't want to eat it kind of you know they're happy we're happy brilliant and of course when we say pests that's very much a label we put on them so can some of these you know pest species yeah uh, be found you know for example on UEA campus yeah um so in entomology we have kind of umbrella groups um where not all of the the individuals in that group will feed on crop plants some of them will feed on what's around us now uh, so one group in particular uh, are the aphids, um, more commonly known as white flies or green flies, uh, to gardeners especially. Um, and they will feed on all kinds of crop plants, but they'll also feed on nettles or roses, and you can find them all over here. And they're, they're often in clusters, um, sort of on the underside of leaves. And, and yeah, there can be like a hundred in a cluster at a time. So if you stumble across them, they're, they're very obvious. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining us today telling us a little about what you do and, and the insects we might find here. No problem, thanks. To tell us about some of the important roles insects play in our ecosystems, I'm joined now by Daryl Bean. Hello, Daryl. Hello. So, Daryl, why are insects important? Um, well, insects play uh, a multitude of really important roles. Um, uh, all these different ecosystem services that they play. Um, it could be pollination, which everyone knows about. So, you know, bees pollinating for uh, the foods that we eat. But uh, there's also other pollinators, uh, wasps, flies, they're really important pollinators too. And of course, they go on to uh, help produce the fruit, which feeds all the other wildlife here on campus. What are some examples of insects we might see around campus and the roles they play? Yeah, so I've mentioned a couple of them. The um, the bees are a good one, and um, wasps, a lot of people dislike them, but they're really important. And flies, hoverflies in particular, are a favourite of mine. So many people just look into I don't know, a patch of ivy and they see buzzing and they think it's bees, it's wasps. But a lot of them are actually hoverflies, and uh, they're really beautiful, and they mimic the bees and the wasps so they don't get eaten, so they're really cool. So you say mimic, is that in behaviour or how they look? or? Uh, actually both, both aspects. So you know, they'll, they'll look like them with the, um, you know, the yellow bands, but they'll also um, have certain behaviours like um, sort of pulsing their abdomen to look like they've got a stinger and uh, yeah, just generally just sort of acting like bees and wasps in their day-to-day -day lives. That's amazing, I had no idea they did that. So I know, you know a lot of people might have read in the news that insects are massively declining. So what do you think that people can do on campus to try and you know, help our, our insects here? Well, uh, on campus, I think one of the main things is to um, try and allow the areas that are left wild for flowers and things like that, you know, let them, don't go and trample on them, you know, keep to the paths. And, um, you know, the best thing you can do if you really want to conserve insects is take an interest in them. And uh, one of the ways to do that is just to, to go out there and learn about them. That's what I did. Fantastic. So what are your tips then for people who want to learn more about insects? Um, tip number one, get out there. Um, <laughs> Tip number two, um, a really, really useful app that uh, I use uh, that you can download on your phone is a, an app called Seek, and it's by iNaturalist, and you can literally use the camera, point at an insect or any wildlife, trees, um, sort of, you know, uh, flowers, anything like that, and it will um, generate what, what that is, or at least narrow it down for you if it, if it doesn't get the exact species. Thank you so much for that. I, I'm going to go and download the app because I think that sounds absolutely brilliant. So thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Cheers.